Worldly today, the U.S. government, the Biden administration, says that as of last week, it had assisted in the departure of at least 377 U.S. citizens and 279 lawful permanent residents of the U.S. from Afghanistan since August 31st. Still, many Afghans, Afghans who desperately want to flee Taliban rule and Afghans who say their lives are at stake, they remain behind, as CNN's Alex Marquardt has discovered. Afghans trying to get out of the country face a black market full of promises, demands of exorbitant fees, and no guarantee of safety or success. Desperate Afghans are now being exploited, like that young man, told that they can get them or their families out if they pay exorbitant, often impossible amounts. Found a man named Zachary Young, who is one of many advertising evacuations from Afghanistan, posting just this week, we can deliver. One LinkedIn user posted messages with Young, where Young said it would be $75,000 for a car to Pakistan. He told another it would be $14,500 per person to get to the United Arab Emirates, or Albania, for another $4,000. Prices well beyond the reach of most Afghans. We got Young's number and called, but he didn't pick up. In a text message, he told CNN that Afghans trying to leave are expected to have sponsors pay for them. If someone reaches out, we need to understand if they have a sponsor behind them to be able to pay evacuation costs, which Young says are highly volatile and based on environmental realities. Young repeatedly declined to break down the costs or say if he's making money. Back in California, a young Afghan-American tells us even though he can't pay, he's still pleading to get his family out. I have sent tons of texts asking these people, begging them to evacuate my family. If I don't be able to evacuate them within the next two weeks, I think I will lose them all. I think I will lose them all, my family. And just moments ago, that young man told me that the Taliban has now issued summons for his family in hiding, indicating his father believes that the Taliban really is after them. Now, the Biden administration continues to work on evacuating people. But as you can see there, there are just so many more Afghans who want to get out of the country. And that just drives prices higher and higher. In another message, that person offering those evacuations, Zachary Young, he wrote, availability is extremely limited and demand is high. Jake, he goes on to say, that's how economics works, unfortunately. That's CNN's Alex Marquardt, accusing Young of running a black market and charging exorbitant fees. Young says it's all lies, painting him as some kind of a war profiteer. Now, remember, this isn't CNN's first rodeo with defamation suits. The thing in this particular case that does seem a little more actionable was the fact that, you know, uh, when they were talking about Mr. Young, they had his picture on the thing, and there was a chyron that says he was involved in a black market. And, you know, I've looked in a couple of dictionaries, three or four, and the first definition for black market in all the dictionaries is, is criminal activity. And, you know, if you are accusing someone of criminal activity and they're not involved in a crime, that's, that's usually uh, defamation per se, correct? Under the um, law where we would be looking at the defamatory meaning, perhaps it would be. Here we're on a question of actual malice, express malice, and outrageous conduct measured sure. by objective standards. Under that uh, criteria, Your Honor, regardless of what the meaning may be in the dictionary, which is an objective definition, what plaintiff needed to show is that subjectively, CNN intended that meaning. Otherwise, there is no uh, uh, facts in the record to give rise to a reasonable jury question well, tell, about tell actual me how, malice. Tell me how the triad works. Um, the triad, Your Honor, is a, a group of three different departments at CNN. It's the Standards and Practices Department, it's the Legal Department, and it's the, uh, the editorial department. They come together and so they So these are lawyers and professional writers that, that uh, you know, are used to dealing with words and have dictionaries and know how precise, what words mean? Um, one would presume, Your Honor, that they're educated people, that they've been in the business for a while, but Your Honor, there is nothing in the record discussing the word blackmail at all among any of the CNN journalists. Yeah. And it is plaintiff's burden. Well, black, mar black market is the word that was used in the Chiron, right? Uh, actually, Your Honor, the, the words used in the, in the Chiron and said by Jake Tapper when he introduced the story was Afghans trying to get out of the country face a black market full of promises, demands of exorbitant fees, and no guarantees of safety or success. And so in context, we 
maintain that it is clear on the face what CNN meant by black market, which is defined within the phrase itself. A market full of promises, demands of exorbitant fees, and no guarantees of safety of success. And there is no dispute, there is no evidence in the record that CNN, for example, knew that promises were being fulfilled or that there was a demand, there was not a demand for exorbitant fees. We just discussed that. That's an opinion, Your Honor. No guarantee of safety or success. The issue under- I, I hate to keep harping on this, but, but none of those things describe what could be commonly referred to as black market. I, I, I see Judge Roberts's point that black market clearly implies dictionary definition or otherwise, uh, an illegal exchange of goods. Your Honor- That has nothing to do with those other descriptions in the Chiron. If it was a poor choice of words, Your Honor, and at best we argue that it was a, uh, at best a poor choice of words, uh, Your Honor, that may have impact on the rest of this case below under negligent standard actual analysis, I mean, whatever standard the trial judge decides to uh, apply. Here, in the punitive damages context, the burden was the plaintiffs in the court below to show that that is the meaning that they intended. It is not um, implied, it is not assumed by the court, it is based on record evidence under 768. Dot seven two of the intention for that meeting. So, so what, what are we to make of the uh, the internal emails that were were brought into the record where they called Mr. Young a shitbag? They said that they were going to nail the Zachary Rung Young in ever. Uh, said he had a punchable face. Said he was an asshole, and said it was his funeral. Bucko. Uh, what, what are we to make of those? Your Honor, are those, or is that at least some evidence of malice? It's actually the opposite, Your Honor. I think there are two bases that are the general, uh, that are the bases for the defamation lawsuit. The first is, as the court has noted, as uh, Judge Roberts, as you noted, is the black market uh, definition. Uh, and Judge, I would add that uh, the black market has one definition in every dictionary we've, not just the first, but one in every dictionary we've looked at. And, and CNN has failed to put forward any dictionary with an alternative definition. It means illegal activity, full stop. And that's what the case law that we've quoted to the court as well treats it, illegal activity. So that's one basis. The second basis isn't about the amount of money he was charging, it's that he charged. But, but do we need to look at their intent? Because uh, uh, opposing counsel's argument was that they, they were using it in a more colloquial sense. They weren't saying this man's committing a crime. They're saying this man's doing something shady. Or so, Judge, I think it, it is absurd in its face to say that they are using the word black market that has but one definition in the English language in a way that it wasn't intended to be used. So what CNN is claiming is they took a word from the English language that has one definition, and they meant when they said black market, they actually meant gray market. But they said black market that has one definition. CNN can't get up there and say, hey, Mr. Young is a serial killer, but actually mean that he was a good Samaritan, but they only knew that in their head. And you know what, Judge, if they did, fine, let them argue that to the jury. At this stage, as the court was focusing on appropriately before, we need to show a reasonable showing that a reasonable basis for punitive damages exists. Will a jury buy that argument that they meant something else when they said black market? I don't think so. But this court is only serving in a gatekeeping function at this point to ensure that proper claims of punitive damages reach the jury. And to say that when somebody uses a word that means what it means is not a sufficient showing, I, I, and then I don't know what should reach the jury for punitive damages claims.